and inspiring stories that will touch your heart and bring Dr. King's message and legacy to life. Join us Monday, January 15th at 7, 6 central. MLK, the dream lives on only on 19 News. The Upper Peninsula's new CBS station, WZMQ19. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sarah Blakely. Tonight on your WZMQ 19 News, slowly but surely, we're finally getting a little bit of snow. Tonight, how the low snowfall so far has impacted tourism and winter events. Plus, a potential threat sent to Gwynn Area Community Schools today. What we know so far from police. And it's not fast food, but it is food that's fast. The grab and go shop in Escanaba that's making healthy eating easier. Your 19 News starts now. Live from the UP, this is WZMQ 19 News at 6. Taking a look outside at downtown Escanaba from our SkyCam on top of the Radio Results Network Media Plaza. It has really picked up in downtown Escanaba just early in the last half hour. You can see the wind is really whipping out there. Air, I was hoping we'd get more snow here, but I do see a lot of those alerts that we had last night were downgraded throughout the day. So what are we looking at? Like, what are we looking like right now? Well, cross your fingers because we are expecting some moderate wet snow. However, in downtown Marquette, most likely we'll see those heavier accumulations in the higher terrains like the Huron Mountains as well as south and west of the city of Marquette. So Nagani, Ishpeming, even Gwyn. Here is uh, the ski cam out at the hill. Yes, there are people skiing out there and we're going to whip around here. Iron County, courtesy of MDOT, these shots, uh, even Delta, Menominee County line. As the, you can see, there's definitely snow on the road. Expect slick, slippery conditions this evening, even into tomorrow. We could also see some patchy fog tonight uh, across the UP. And as you can see, the past couple of hours, we've had more snow moving in. I've got the latest on these uh, weather alerts. As Sarah mentioned, they've been downgraded to winter weather advisory. We're going to have very cold temperatures this evening, and we'll see even colder temperatures next week. All right, Air, thank you. The late start to the snowy season has caused some concern for future winter events, although today we did see some relief. WZMQ's Mitchell Reif joins us live from Teal Lake in Nagani with more about the impact. Mitch, how's it looking out there? Is the snow starting to stick? Yeah, good evening, Sarah. The snow looks like it's starting to stick around for the time being. Um, uh, we did see a couple ice fishers behind me at Teal Lake doing a little ice fishing, so it seems like their season is uh, coming around the corner. And not having enough snow, that could be a huge obstacle for a lot of our UP events here. Uh, I spoke with a handful of the hotels in the area who were reluctant to speak on camera, but some say they've seen a bigger decline in reservations and in room bookings. Events like the Tequamanon Sled Dog Race have been already canceled, a late start to Marquette Mountain season, and even the Winter Carnival in Houghton had a pushback to the start date of their month-long builds. I spoke with Travel Marquette CEO who tells me our winter seasonal events are a large contributor to a lot of small businesses in the area. And without the snow, the effects can just domino. It affects the entire economy. And because of the winter events that we have, and because it is a very active time of year, a lot of people are dependent on those big events to carry them through the winter months to be able to stay here year round in Marquette. One of the events coming up relying on that fresh snowfall is the ski tournament. And tonight at 1110 Central, you'll hear a little bit more from the ski club uh, about the tournament, about the upcoming tournament, and how much snow they'll actually need to keep the event running. Sarah, back to you. All right, Mitchell, thank you very much. Developing now an investigation into a potential threat made against Gwynn's middle and high school today. We're working to get more details from the Forsyth Township Police Department, but according to the department's Facebook page, police were alerted just after 7 this morning to a social media threat made against the school. Police say they were able to make contact with the person who sent that threat and that at this time there's no immediate threat to the school or community. The investigation is ongoing. WZMQ will continue to update this story as details become available.
An Iron Mountain man will spend at least three years in prison for severely beating his toddler. Jeffrey Ireton was sentenced in Dickinson County Court today. He was convicted of the lesser second degree child abuse after being initially charged with first degree child abuse this past October. Ireton was found guilty of beating his 23 month old child using a Swiffer duster so severely the child suffered a potential life threatening condition called rhabdomyolysis. Ireton was sentenced to a minimum of 40 months in a Michigan correctional facility with a maximum of 10 years. For many with resolutions to eat better in the new year, one obstacle is the convenience of fast food restaurants. WZMQ's Escanaba Bureau reporter Lily Simmons talks with an Escanaba business owner offering a healthier alternative. Growing up, uh, my mom was diabetic most of her life, and uh, so I learned what's good for diabetics and what's not good, and I was always heavy, real heavy as a kid. After experimenting with different diets, Rick Mishaw finally found something that worked for him. I've been on keto diet for 14 years, and I used to be 360 pounds, and uh, I've lost 160, and it's just a lifestyle. With more than three decades of experience running a catering company, Mishaw opened Grab and Go on Ludington Street two years ago. We have some vegan options, we have some vegetarian options, gluten-free, our keto stuff, and we also do some dairy-free things, lots of sugar-free things for diabetics. Many turn to fast food as a quick way to fuel up during a busy day. Mayshaw sees grab and go as a healthy alternative. Our slogan is actually grab and go, food fast, not fast food. It's a quick service deli, and it's not that unhealthy processed stuff. This is all whole foods that we use and real fats. You can come in and have soup and sandwich and not feel guilty at all. And there are plenty of choices for those who aren't looking for any special diet or ingredients, just good food. Everything that we do here is homemade. We don't buy box mixes or, or frozen products. We do it all from scratch, including all of our desserts. And we bake fresh baked pasties every day. Ms. Shaw invites anyone looking to make a positive change in their diet or looking for a quick bite on the run to stop by Grab and Go for a lunch break. Especially if people are toying with the idea of trying a different eating style. I encourage anybody to come in and try some things and you will not know <laughs> that they're low carb or different ingredients. Lily Simmons, WZMQ 19 News, Escanaba. Your first morning weather forecast is coming up after this break. Plus, what's up with Megan O'Connor? A little birdie tells us she has the details about a special event this week in Marquette. And some ice safety reminders as lakes start to freeze up and people head out to ice fish. We're back in two minutes. Tonight, this charity worker was helping cities prepare for the influx of migrants bust in from Texas. What did the state of Texas do that made her walk away? And a massive storm system impacting millions across nearly all 50 states. We're tracking its path on the CBS Evening News. John's Auto is quickly becoming everybody's favorite place to buy their car, get their car fixed. John's Auto is quickly becoming everybody's favorite place to fix their car. Oh, is that right? For a better service experience, come to John's Auto and work. Why do I keep forgetting that word? Experience, experience, experience. 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 Okay, go. For a better service experience, come to John's Auto Marquette. And don't forget, we're our... Meet Mike Baxter, Pioneer. Dad, how do you kill an elk? Wait outside the lodge until last call, then hit it with a tire. Frontiersman. The pheasant hunting is ridiculous. All the running and the chasing and the fetching. That's what the dog's for. But Mandy did such a good job. Who's a good girl? Legend. I have a 60-year-old truck and a 30-year-old marriage. You should be happy that I am stuck in my old ways. I do love that truck. No wonder he's the last man standing. Home for CBS is WZMQ19. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Shunk Furniture. Happy New Year from Shunks of Marquette. It's January, out with the old and in with the new. There's thousands of items that we have to clear out to make room. There's clearance items in every department. There's big discounts on mattresses from Serta, Sealy, and Tempur-Pedic. And big savings on living room from Smith Brothers, Flexdale, England, and Lazy Boy. And there's huge savings in Amish dining room and bedroom. And reclining furniture? Nobody gives you more choices than Shunk Furniture Marquette. Over 300 recliners in stock. Shop Shunks today. 
Now, WZMQ 19 News First Warning Weather with Ariane Stasek. Better enjoy these temps now, kids, because we're going to see temperatures even dipping down into below zero coming up this weekend into next week with a possible mother storm on the way. But let's get through what's happening right now. We've got cloudy conditions, flurries flying around, and then those winter weather advisories basically going until 7 a.m. for the majority of the UP. Chippewa and Mackinac counties, that goes until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. And as you can see, we could see anywhere up to 6 inches further over here in the east and like I mentioned earlier the higher trains uh, here on mountains Gwyn, Nagani, Ishpeming you guys could be seeing a little bit more we've got gusty winds especially along those lake shores 35 to 40 miles an hour we've got patchy fog joining the party as well so visibility could definitely be reduced the past couple of hours most of our uh, snow showers have been pushing in from the southeast here and then we'll see that uh, of course, increasing radar currently showing basically Marquette all the way to the bridge a little bit heavier there. And I believe there was a lot more accumulation down in Wisconsin as well as the mitten. By 11 o'clock, we'll see more of those flurries from Elger all the way over to uh, Chippewa counties there. And then some lake effect snow showers moving in on our uh, Wednesday morning and even Wednesday night, possibly Thursday as well before we maybe see a little bit of a break, possible sunshine there on Thursday, and then another round pushing in uh, from the uh, nose there, southwest corner of the UP, and then we'll be hopefully mostly cloudy on our Thursday night, but snow adventurers don't uh, fret. We've got more snow on the way. Right now we've got about one to two inches across the UP and we'll see those kind of increase this evening, kind of definitely increasing this evening. We could see about half an inch here in Marquette. Everybody else, of course, to the east of us a little bit more by Wednesday morning. Look at that four and a half inches along uh, St. Ignace by the bridge. So if you've got to head down state or you're coming back up, up. Make sure you're prepared for those conditions and make sure you give those plows plenty of time to clear the roads. Okay, Thursday evening, we could have a couple more inches along that uh, Wisconsin border, Gogebic, Iron, and Dickinson counties. UP winds right now coming out of the northeast. We've got gusts this evening. We could see those increase, of course, later on tonight, maybe up to 33 here in Marquette, 29 down in Menominee, 25 over there in Manistique. We'll have winds in the morning as well, primarily coming out of the north before things kind of chill out by five o'clock. Could we see normal gust speeds there about 15 miles an hour? So looking forward to that. Tomorrow our highs are in that 20 to 35 degree range. And then let's take a look at our seven day for Marquette brought to you by Shunk Furniture. Windy, snowy flurries. Look at these temperatures next week. I wasn't kidding. Thank you very much, Ariane. And as temperatures drop, the U.S. Coast Guard would like to remind everyone to be safe and careful when ice fishing and ice skating this winter. The Coast Guard says just because it's snowing doesn't mean the ice is safe yet. The U.S. Coast Guard says check the weather conditions before you set out and carrying proper safety equipment like a handheld radio and a flotation device can also help you say stay dry and safe. You know what the weather's going to look like, where you're going, how many people are going to be going there. Let people, your friends and family know where you're going and how long you're going to be gone. Uh, make sure you're wearing the right clothing for the water temp instead of the air temperature, just in case you go in, which we hope you don't. The Coast Guard and first responders train to perform ice rescues throughout the winter to ensure they are prepared. Our 19 News Insights is on the way next. What do you do when your tire goes flat and there's no air anywhere to fix that? You reach for Bullseye Pro, the smarter, faster, hands-free way to fill it up with air. Bullseye Pro is equipped with a rechargeable lithium-ion power plant. So fast, so strong, and so convenient. It's like putting the power of an air compressor in the palm of your hand. Look, you can inflate all four tires of your car on a single charge or inflate a bag full of soccer balls at practice. Bullseye Pro is so advanced, it has a built-in smart pressure digital sensor that gauges and automatically stops when the set tire pressure is reached. Plus, it can be 100% hands-free. You simply set the target pressure and walk away, keeping you out of harm's way. Bullseye Pro is lightweight, 
durable, and powerful enough to inflate this massive monster truck tire. Plus, it has four ultra-bright LED lights to safely inflate at night. Bullseye Pro comes with three custom air nozzles on board, so you can easily inflate pool toys, exercise balls, and more. Forget driving to the gas station. Bullseye Pro is your anywhere, anytime inflation station. Call or go online now and get the complete Bullseye Pro inflation system, all for the factory direct price of just $79.99. It comes with a 90-day money-back guarantee. Plus, we'll ship your entire order free. That's right, free shipping. But to really inflate this offer, we'll give you a 50% discount on a second one. You get it all, an incredible value for one low price. Call or go online to order now. To order, call 1-800-794-9110 or go to GetBullseyePro.com. So call 1-800-794-9110. That's 1-800-794-9110 or order online at GetBullseyePro.com. You're watching the award-winning WCMQ 19 News, live and local with Sarah Blakely. The cost of child care has increased dramatically in the past few years, and Market Algerisa is highlighting a program through the state of Michigan that helps families pay for that much needed service. It's called TriShare. Joining us tonight is Marisa's early childhood director, Lindsay Carey. Thanks for coming in, Lindsay. Thank you for having me. Of course. So tell us about what TriShare is and how that even works. Yeah, so TriShare is a program to help make child care more affordable for families. Well, we are utilizing an employer to pay a third of the cost, the grant to pay a third of the cost, and then therefore reducing the cost of childcare to one third for the employee. Very nice, yeah, and I know Marisa has also um, been focusing on these rising costs. What What's kind of contributing to all of that? It's, it's a whole, I feel like, amalgamation of everything <laughs> happening right now. Yeah, childcare is a little tricky right now. We know that we have a very small workforce, we have limited options, and then we also have to look at the cost. So there's a barrier when people want to go back to work after having a baby, they need to have a spot and they need to be able to afford it in their career. Um, so programs like TriShare and looking at child care subsidy offer support for families. Gotcha. Now, when if, if parents and families want to sign up for this TriShare, is that something that they can pick whatever child care provider or is it like there's a list of approved providers? No. Nope. So TriShare is great. So if their employer is willing to participate, so the business has to sign on first, their mm -hmm. employer, and if they sign on, all they have to utilize is a license provider so we don't pay child care for you know a neighbor or all of that they have to go through the licensing so it's regulated but they can choose their provider and we work real closely with them to ensure that um, all the tuition is paid that everything's real seamless for both the business that signs on but also for the family and the provider there's a lot of different hands you know working through this project yeah so it's really just an incredible opportunity if employers are willing to invest in their employees sure when did this program get started 2021 so it launched as a pilot and it was overwhelmingly you know looked at and uh, used and now it's being modeled for other states which is really incredible yeah that's awesome um, so who again is eligible for TriShare then yeah so any business that is um, headquartered in Michigan can use like can choose so it doesn't have to be a large business it can be a smaller business um, but then the employee has to make between 201% and 325% of the federal poverty level. Um, so that's the family income. Um, so that, like, if you look at a family of four, that's between $60,500 and about $97,500. So that's a pretty significant range yeah. that could be supported with this program. Certainly. Um, I know that Marisa also has an upcoming event to talk mm -hmm. about TriShare. Tell us yes. about that. So we, as Marquette Algerisa, host the hub for the entire Upper Peninsula. So on January 30th at 8 a.m. and at noon, we are hosting Zoom meetings for potential businesses that are interested in learning more about the program. Awesome. And our goal, if it may not work for your business, is share it with somebody else. The more mm -hmm. that we can spread the word about this program, the more families we can help because we know childcare costs are a huge 
barrier mm -hmm. for retaining employees and even attracting employees to our different businesses. For sure. And for families that are listening, thinking, I might like to get some more information about that too. What's the first step yeah. for them? So on our website, there's lots of information about TriShare, but they're always welcome to email or call us and we're happy to share information. They're also the word of mouth. If there's a business that we don't know that their employees could utilize yeah. this support, we're happy to cold call some businesses to ensure that families get the support they need. Cool. All right. Well, Lindsay, thank you so much for sharing for tonight. We appreciate me. it. Thank yeah. you. Still ahead tonight, Megan O'Connor is in the studio with a sneak beek at an event in Marquette this Friday. And later, U of M makes history, clinching a national title for the first time in decades. Mike Ludlum has the highlights on the way. But first, here's your Youpers United volunteer opportunity of the day. The Nakabadon Ski Marathon needs lots of volunteers. Organizers are looking for people to help with registration, road crossings, first aid stations, the finish line. Races are in Marquette January 26th through the 27th. To sign up to be a volunteer or check out some other opportunities, head on over to youpersunited.com. Coming up tonight on the CBS Evening News, our report on a new study that revealed hundreds of thousands of nanoplastics could be in the water you drink. The concern about plastic bottles, those headlines and more here on the CBS Evening News. I am excited to share that we are officially back. Here we go, season two. Woo! We're back here at Fire Country. It's going to be lit. February 16th. There's danger around every corner at this job. Cal Fire's coming to you. Step back. You run into fires like a superhero. TV's most watched new show is back. I'm here to save as many lives as possible. Fire Country returns. Part of CBS Premier Week after Super Bowl 58 on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus. Hi, Paul. Meet Opie Taylor. He's dramatic. <laughs> a dreamer. I wish that I get a B in arithmetic. But most of all, I think you're the best sheriff in the whole world. He's devoted to dad. It's Andy and Opie on The Andy Griffith Show. Weeknights at 8 on MeTV 19.1. I'm Rachel Knapp. Watch my reports live from Washington, only on 19 News. It's no secret. The local housing market has dramatically changed over the last few years. These days, having a real estate agent is essential for managing and simplifying the process of buying or selling a home. And in this market, you're not going to want just any agent. You need a realtor who's special. One with decades of success, who's energetic, talented, and uses all the latest technology. Someone who knows the diversity of the market, the Upper Peninsula, and its people. That's Stephanie Jones of Select Realty. Visit stephaniesells.com and let Stephanie Jones open new doors for you. Come on down to Outdoor Man. When do I get to shoot the crossbows? We're breaking the rules. Rules. So you're 13, I don't even think it's legal. So we should do it after lunch. Our camping department is intense. Set it up in 30 seconds flat. And take it down even faster. And we're always family friendly. He's adorable. Listen, we found a bear cub in here. Been nice knowing you, Baxter. Outdoor Man is open for business on Last Man Standing. I'm Sophia Murphy at the Capitol in Lansing, only on WZMQ 19 News. Let's find out what's up with Megan O'Connor, and tonight is going to the birds. You know I will only share the best events with you and maybe share a few jokes because I'm such a hoot. Any guesses to what we are talking about on What's Up With Megan tonight? We are finding out what's up with owls previewing the search of evening owls event at the Moosewood Nature Center in Marquette. This Friday at 6 p.m., board member and bird lover Scott Stewart will take bird enthusiasts to secret locations where owls have recently been active. Scott will call for the birds and participants will be able to listen for their replies. Bird attendees may hear multiple different owls, including the great horned owl, great gray, or barred owls. Suggested donation for the program is $5 for adults and $10 for families. This program is extremely popular, so you need to pre-register. To register or for more information, visit the Moosewood Nature Center Facebook page. I love that they're doing this event because owls are so cool and I don't know about you but I just get so excited every time I just randomly see one out there. I agree. I feel like they're so rare to see it yeah. that to like hear them would be really neat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Goodness sakes. Thank you very much, Megan. You're welcome. <laughs> 
All right, moving right along here. History was made last night for the University of Michigan. Mike Ludlam has the highlights from their huge win over Washington. Mike, what a game. A good game for about three quarters, and then Michigan took control. The first round, we'll get to that in just a second, though. The first round of voting in the Upper Peninsula Sports Writers and Sportscasters Association high school basketball polls could be called successful. The right teams, at least in my book, are number one. So let's take a look in the boys divisions one through three. Iron Mountain a unanimous first with an eight no record. Kingsford and Menominee are next with eight and one marks. Ishpeming is fourth, Nagani and Marquette are tied for fifth, and Jeffers also received votes. In the Division Four poll, that's Forest Park leading with an undefeated record. Only three first place votes. Pickford with two is in second, St. Ignace one and third. Munising and Norway, also Superior Central and Ironwood getting votes. To the girls, Nagani in one through three, a unanimous number one, nine and old record. Then it falls off a bit and you don't know where to go after that. Houghton, Sault Ste. Marie, Westwood and Gladstone with Bark River Harris, Manistee and West Iron County also getting votes. And Division Four, St. Ignace is, or Ishpeming I should say, is number one, five and old record. St. Ignace is second, then it's Lakeland and Hubble, Berga, Munising and Ironwood tied for fifth. Carney Nato, you and Trout Creek and Stevenson also getting votes. Turning to football. Yes, fireworks all over the place in Houston last night in the national championship game. Jim Harbaugh with his team and the running attack ready to get going early, and they did. Donovan Edwards, where is he? There he is, and by the time Washington figured it out, 41 yards for a touchdown. Just under five minutes into the game, Michigan has a 7-0 lead. We move on in quarter number one after Washington kicked the field goal. Edwards hides again and then takes off again. This one's good for 46 and a good extra point as well. Michigan up 14 to three. Ah, but there's more than just Donovan Edwards. Blake Corn's been known to get some good runs in this season as well. He finds a hole and he's gonna cut down the sideline. This will end the quarter. This is good for 59 yards by time all is said and done. Second quarter, oh, Jim Harbaugh will figure out that, hey, John's in the house, the Baltimore Ravens coach. Hey, what took you so long to get here? Oh, he has been busy. We go to the fourth quarter now, Michigan up seven. Blake Corum is going to score again. Michigan had more than 300 yards rushing between Corum, Edwards, and J.J. McCarthy. And the interception by Mike Sandra still wrapped it all up. Your national champions, the Michigan Wolverines, 34-13. First time since 1977, Jim Harbaugh says holiday meals will get better. And next year, don't forget, Michigan and Washington both will be in the Big Ten Conference. So, Sarah, really good night for the Wolverines overall. Well, that's for sure, Mike. Thank you very much. Ariane has one final check on our weather outlook after this. Shop hundreds of Lazy Boys at Kirkish Furniture in Houghton. Kick back in comfort in an industry-leading recliner. Choose from all fabrics, colors, and sizes with prices starting as low as $4.99 plus free delivery. Shop Kirkish Furniture in Houghton today. Last season on Ghosts, we've learned a thing or two about living with the dead. Hell is mostly emails and Zooms that should have been emails. But there's one really, really big thing we're still dying to know. Oh my god! What? I think one of the ghosts just left. What? Who? Why they make us wait for answer. It's called a cliffhanger, Thor. Ghost returns, part of CBS Premier Week after Super Bowl 58 on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus. I like Goodwill because they give people barriers to employment work. My job at Goodwill entails mainly just cashiering and answering the phone. I like to greet the customers, of course I do that a lot. A lot of times I'll greet them by their first name. It's nice to be able to work because I have a you know, disability and I knew I would have a tough time getting a job maybe outside of here with my um, limited mobility and that. I would definitely thank Goodwill for all, the, all they've done to accommodate me, you know, give me the opportunity. 
the Baxter Family Survival Guide. Dad, you taught us to be self-sufficient. And yet, you're all still here. Rule number one, expect the unexpected. If you want money, maybe you should do what other people do. Get my own reality show. Dad, I'm trying. <laughs> Rule number two, learn to adapt. You're gonna use a glass, right? Fine, hand me the big one. Rule number three, stand your ground. You know, when we got married, I thought I was a smart one. <laughs> Last man standing. BTV, decodes the Andy Griffith Show. It sure was slicker than Firehouse Pole the way you took us all in. That means you were very clever pulling a scheme on us. See if you could decode the Andy Griffith Show. Weeknights at 8. All right, just a reminder, we've got winter weather advisories going until tomorrow at 7 a.m. for the majority of us, except for Chippewa and Mackinac counties. That goes until 10 a.m. We could see some very gusty winds, 35 to 40 miles an hour, so patchy blowing snow. Our temperatures right now in that 25 to even 35 degree range. We won't see those negative digits until later on next week. Midday, we'll be in the mid-20s across the board with, again, some patchy blowing snow. Your seven-day outlook for escalation Canaba flurries, and then friends, those temperatures we're seeing negative digits next week. Thank you very much, Ariane. That is all the time we have for tonight. Thanks for being here. We'll see you back here tonight at 11:10 Central. Tonight.